Hi everyone! I'm here for the second time this month because as I said, I was gonna come back to give people some hints, some suggestions on how to improve their English language skills uh, as exchange students, as Science Without Borders students or just as people <laughs> in general. So yeah, over the past months I've been having some requests to do this. I think there's also some, some sense of, of curiosity about what my English sounds like, what I sound like uh, when I'm speaking English. So here it is. And I think it will be good like that you actually get to hear the hints, the suggestions about English in English. That's a very good idea. Whoever gave me this idea, thank you. Here it is. <laughs> so, yeah, just a little bit of my background. I, I started studying English when I was 10. Uh, it was something I've looked forward to for a very long time. My mom used to be an English teacher and even in my house, um, we would watch sometimes cartoons and videos in English uh, besides like having contact with international music since forever so I was really excited when when I started and back in 2010 2001 and 2010 oh gosh 2001 and I remember that like I really put in my mind that I, when I finished I would like to follow my, my mother's footsteps and become an English teacher too and that's a, exactly what happened so I studied for seven years at CCAA it's a very traditional and good quality school in Brazil. I can say that because I saw how the method works from from both sides, being a student and being a teacher as well. This is not a propaganda, this is not an ad, this is just like really, literally what I think. I think it's a great place to study English and if you have a CCAA in your, in your hometown, why not? Just, <laughs> I think I should give it a chance. But, well, let's not talk about English courses. Let's focus on, like, the the ability and the the skill and, like, what it takes to to improve your, your English speaking skills. So, uh, as a Science Without Borders student, uh, I, I notice that many many of the people that come they are actually or they, they don't seem to be aware of the fact that proving their english abilities is more than than something like it doesn't resume to being a step to getting admitted in the program the thing is that you're actually coming to another country to study in english and that's where the thing gets hard because okay in our schools even though like in general uh in especially if, if uh in public service in our schools uh, the english we learn is not really enough for uh we're just like going out there and saying you do speak english even though we spend years and years in school it doesn't really happen and people here they don't understand how that works like if you have school if you have English at school, how do you, like, why do you pay to study it in an English course? Like, how does that work? But that's the reality for us, and we all know that. So the thing is, even if you if you do have some, some good base, and if you get admitted at the exam, either IELTS or TOEFL, the thing that sometimes people miss is that you're coming to study in English. And that means... Uh, dealing with academic vocabulary and for many courses my courses for example it's not only about listening to the lectures and understanding the lectures although that is a crucial part but it's participating in the lectures it's like being able to answer questions being able to to like contribute in debates and also writing because uh, for example in my class I have to write at least uh, two essays per module, so that's quite a lot. And for someone that is not familiar with the academic language, that can be quite a challenge. My personal experience, uh, when, when I arrived in my first module here, what happened was that I wasn't quite used to the British accent um, in, at the CAA and like 
in general, like the, the movies that, that come to us, even the international music are mostly from the United States, so we're naturally more used to the American English. So I did struggle to understand what the teachers were saying, especially those words that were um, strictly related to my course, related to my subject. So I had to, I remember I had to like sit in class and pay full attention. You know, when you're looking at something and you can't blink, if you blink, you're gonna miss. <laughs> so uh, that's why, like, that's what happened to me in the first months. And many of my classes, they actually, um, it's, they're, they were in a structure that here in my university they call uh, seminar classes which is like the teacher talks for a while, he explains a, con uh, a concept, and then he asks the class to participate, either, either in groups or like just asking questions to individuals. So that really challenged me. The fact that sometimes the, the professor was explaining something and then he would stop and make a question and, and ask a question, and that was not a rhetorical question, you know, he really wanted someone to answer. And sometimes he would just wait for anyone to volunteer for an answer, but many times he would just point, and if he points, you have to answer. <laughs> so that challenged me, and I decided from the very first week that even though I didn't feel 100% comfortable with the accent, with the new vocabulary related to my area, I would like just go for it, like step up and try, you know, and speak as much as possible because I was only going to learn if I would really like pay attention and speak as well. People ignore that actually. They think that just the fact that they are in an English speaking country is enough for them like to kind of absorb. It is very important, it is crucial, but Speaking is, is a key point as well, and of course I'm gonna develop that a little bit more uh, further in the video. So, I was also always trying to participate in whatever ways I could, and something that I started doing as well, uh, as well and I do until now, was uh, taking notes in English. That was very important, so as the te teacher was saying, sometimes like my brain wanted to go uh, like to automatically go into Portuguese mode and I would just shut it down as I tried to keep the thoughts in English and write whatever I needed to write in English as well. So that helped me uh, have a solid vocabulary base because the teacher talks in an, in an academic vocabulary and if I just put that in Portuguese, when I was going to, when I would like translate or would speak again in English, it wouldn't be the same, you know, if I was just translating back. But if I got exactly those words and those concepts and, they, and the way they were, they were taught to me and wrote them down, I knew that would make the difference. And it actually did. In my first essays, uh, the first things I had to write for my modules, I was really struggling, really struggling, and I generally don't struggle with writing, like, I don't like, I, I don't like having to write, I don't like the obligation uh, of writing, I love spontaneous writing, but anyway, if I have to, I know I can do it, and I can do it fairly well, so... Uh, I remember that I like postponed everything to the last minute because, you know, I, I know how I work, I know I'm gonna do this. And seriously, <laughs> I was sweating because it, it got to, to a point sometimes that I wanted to express myself and I had really deep ideas, but I just couldn't put them on the paper because I, I didn't know how to organize my thoughts or I didn't know how to express myself using uh, the English vocabulary and the English vocabulary specifically for my course. And just a couple of weeks ago, maybe last week actually, I had to make another essay and it was incredible like how easy it was for me just to sit down and write and not only sit down and write but write whatever I wanted whatever I thought of whatever came into my mind and uh, it, it felt like so comfortable you know this idea of mission accomplished of like 
um, not having to hold back on what you really want to say, what you really want to express because you feel that you have gone one step further. And I've been privileged as well to be able to travel a lot even before I came here as an exchange student. So I had been abroad, I think three, three or four times, I'm really not sure, but maybe three times before, uh, yeah, three times to, to English speaking countries before uh, coming here. So in those opportunities I had no, four times. Sorry, guys, my mind isn't that. Now that I mentioned that, I can take it out of my mind. Let, let's see, 2008, 2010, 2011. Yeah, four times. Yeah, because one of them was to an, a Spanish-speaking country. So, yeah, four times. And, and those times really gave me the opportunity to practice, not only as I was traveling, but also, like, with the friendships I built, so I was able to keep communicating with those people and obviously in English. Also, uh, it's it's been only recently that I've been traveling mostly as a tourist, really, because most of my trips before had been volunteering trips. So I was actually working in English-speaking countries or, or countries like Switzerland that don't have English as an official language, but well, in the place where I was working, everyone does speak English. So it kind of forced me to use what I already had from my English course. And it was a great opportunity. And I'm sure that uh, if it hadn't been for that, maybe I wouldn't feel like completely confident so soon. Because really, it was just for the first couple of months that I struggled with those things of like having to pay full attention in class and like really like making a brain effort <laughs> to write. And like shortly after, I don't know, March, February, I would say I was already okay with that. Also because I started getting involved uh, with like working a working position. I am volunteering in, in the church I attend, in the production team. And that was really nice as well because it's so different to work in my area in English. For example, I operate camera and I operate camera live. So I get instruct instructions and I have to make them, like to make the thing happen at the same time. And I had never worked live before and I had never worked in English with video before. So I remember the first time I was freaking out, like I was, oh my goodness, where is this going? Because there was a lot going on, lots of music, and at the same time I had to focus on what people were saying in the earphones. But well, now I feel completely comfortable with it. And and it's amazing like to see the improvement, not only in my camera work, but also like in communicating with my peers uh, in English. Okay, so first thing I would say then is like pay attention to classes, of course, and try to train your brain to process the information and to write in English. Second thing, you are probably not coming alone, like as the only Brazilian student to the place where you are coming. So it is very tempting and it's very comfortable to just stick to the Brazilians, to just like continue hanging out with them or being friends only with them because it's it's easy, it's comfortable. They come from the same culture, it's the same language, everyone is kind of in the same boat, you know, away from family, studying in a foreign country. So it is really tempting to to like stick to the Brazilians, but that was something I put in my mind to do from the very beginning and now I can say that it's a pleasure for me that I have many friends that are actually from here but it was actually also a matter of effort you know of not um, feeling comfortable in the Brazilian uh, only with the Brazilian circle so uh, I had some modules for example that uh, that had other Brazilians in class other than me and sometimes I noticed that many of, of them, many of us, would sit together and then when we had discussions, people would do it in Portuguese 
and I knew like that was not good. <laughs> so sometimes I would al arrive a little bit earlier or a little bit late and make sure I don't sit around Brazilians. I know that can, can sound like very bad depending on the connotation you're taking, but uh, I'd like to make a very clear point that this was strictly because I was training myself to to speak English as much as I could in every context. And not only that, not only like following classes, but like building like relationships with classmates that were English speaking people. So, and I actually, I actually like succeeded in that. And that's something I, I still like continue to do. I think it's very healthy. I think it, it adds a lot to, to your experience. So second thing I would say, stay away from the temptation of hanging out with Brazilians. Like I, I emphasize a lot the class aspect, but in everything, okay? So you're going away, I mean, you're going to travel or you're going just to the city center, try to go with someone that is not a Portuguese speaking person and you're going to see that this thing really, really makes a difference. Uh, third thing I would say is read, like read a lot. Uh, in those first months where like when it was too kind of hard for me to adapt to this new British English reality, something that really helped me was reading the newspaper. So here in newspaper, there is a, a free newspaper called Metro. So I would get the Metro whenever I was like away from my house and read it, read any article, anything that interested me. Sometimes I wouldn't even read the full articles, but just the titles or like something here, a paragraph here, a paragraph there. And it really increased my vocabulary. And something else, of course, is reading books. I... I found out here again how much I love to read. It had been a while since I, I had last like had this relationship with books that I have now. Maybe because of lack of time. Maybe because, um, yeah, I was working a lot and, and studying a lot. So I wouldn't really do it. But here it's amazing how people have this this habit of of really reading a lot. Like reading thick books and reading wherever they are. The last book I finished was this one. Let me get it for you guys. It's called Star of the Sea. It's by Joseph O'Connor, an Irish writer. And seriously, I was in love with it. I finished reading it at, uh, yesterday, actually, and I missed it so much. I, I miss it so much already. And of course, I've already bought another one that will be um, my my companion from now on. But this is something that definitely helps a lot. And it, it was funny that as I was writing this last essay, I really found some similarities between my sentences structure and the structures in this book. Because you really absorb it as you read. So yeah, another tip would be that. Read read as much as you can and further like going further a little more in in this speaking thing i know it is it's, it's natural that when you don't feel comfortable with a language you just try to to hold back from speaking or speaking as little as possible of course uh you can just open your mouth and and like say whatever, like ignoring rules and stuff. I mean, people could understand you, but I don't think that is nice, especially if you're a Science Without Borders student and if you are representing the country. Really, I think we should care for this image. Like, our government invests lots of money in us. It's not little money, it's a lot of money. And I feel really sad when I listen, like, to... to or when I read... Uh, students saying that like they don't really care like that they just want an experience abroad or when they open their mouths to speak English and it's like not only because it's bad because sometimes I don't know you got a mark in IELTS it was enough for you you're coming for a six month course you still don't really know but you have some idea on where to go with English 
but you're going to improve but some people really don't show any interest at all in going one step ahead and yeah I kind of feel I, I don't only feel like sorry for them like not sorry I don't only feel like as they as if they were doing something wrong something bad in representing the country but I also feel sorry and sad because they're missing out and on such a good opportunity such an amazing opportunity that I really think this should be more carefully considered by the students that come here and people ask uh, lots of questions about accent if it was difficult to adapt to the British accent I think what I said around about um, about my classes already exemplifies that but yeah it was kind of hard uh, I feel in the beginning I didn't really like the British accent I mean it didn't sound natural to me, maybe because I was used to the American accent only, but now <laughs> it's interesting because when I hear someone with a very strong American accent, I, I, I think like, what are you doing? Why are you speaking like that? As if that were natural. So it's interesting how my perspective has changed. But obviously, accent is just a matter of getting used to it. And the more you, you expose yourself to it, the more you're going to learn. So just go out on the streets, listen to people and talk. And about my own accent, to be very honest, people rarely recognize me as a Brazilian. I know that Brazilians have um, some sort of English accent when they speak, but um, I don't know, people just say they don't see that in me. And I think it's maybe because I had traveled before and I was also an English teacher. So in my course, uh, I mean, as a teacher, I was kind of trained to, like, not to have an accent, of course. Um, but also, I feel like I'm sort of a, a sponge when it comes to accent. And not only in the way that I incorporate... Uh, what I hear but in a way that I add to what I already have so I think my accent now is a complete mess like it's so crazy because you can't really say I have a British accent at the same time I don't speak like American English so I don't know I'm kind of in between I remember that last year when I was in in Kenya volunteering like people speak English there and um, the R, for example, they say it in a different way. It's it's a stronger R. For example, Friday, they would say Friday. <laughs> and I remember that, like, in my last days there, I spent one month there, I was already saying Friday. <laughs> so I was like, no, hold on, what am I doing? <laughs> Let me go back, like, to my standard, because I was still a teacher. I had to keep up with this standard. So, yeah, I kind of absorb things here and there. I think one example of what happened to my accent here, like concerning the British influence, like you hear that British influence. Yeah, I don't speak British English, British influence, but British influence. Uh, for example, the word uh, tomato. American English, like that word in American English would be tomato you know, with the last T sounding almost like an R, tomato. But British English would be tomato, like tomato. This A uh, is very typical from here, tomato. And I don't speak tomato and I don't speak tomato either. I speak tomato. <laughs> so it's like my A is A, tome. But my last T is not American, so tomato. <laughs> well, that's kind of the mixture I've been experiencing. But, well, people don't have any hard time understanding me, actually. I get uh, compliments uh, for my English, which, of course, make me very happy. And I always give account to CCA <laughs> when, they, when they say such things. And it's a mistake to think that the differences between American English and English in and British English resume to accent. Actually, there are uh, the structure is very different. The, the intonation is very different, and that is something that I learned only as I traveled. Because 
uh, as I mean, it's not something you pick up only from from studying in a course. Languages they have certain intonations, and you only pick, you know, the the right intonation, the right pace for the language you're you're learning, as as you like hear it from the natives and from the everyday communication. So there is that. And of course, there are many words that differ in the vocabulary, and some some sounds also some some phonemes that in American English are, are read in a certain way, and in British English, I read are read differently. Remember that, like some of the of two, maybe two examples that like shocked me kind of the most were uh, the words Gloucester and Leicester. Uh, Leicester gives name to one of London's most famous squares, Leicester Square. And seriously, when I found out how Leicester Square was written, I was kind of shocked because in American English you would basically read Leicester Square as it's written Leicester. Um, but Leicester, same thing for Gloucester, uh, one of the stops here in, in the because the line, for example, is Gloucester Road, but you notice it's written Gloucester. So, yeah, I learned a lot from the tube, too. <laughs> you learn even with public transportation, really. Being in a foreign country, you only don't learn if you don't want to, if you stick to people that are native from the same country where you are native, like the same country you're from, and if you don't speak like seriously speaking is crucial speaking is really important and obviously these suggestions they apply more for people that are like studying here maybe already but if you're planning to come i think it's it's important that you have those things in mind and as a preparation i would say if you have the time and the opportunity join an english course it's always good to add uh, knowledge and prepare yourself better because as I said in the beginning like the right mindset to have is I'm going there to study so I need to be well prepared for academic vocabulary for being able to express myself in the university environment so if you have the time join an English course if not uh, or if you are already in English course what can improve it's definitely like listening to music, getting read of dubbed anything, dubbed series, dubbed um, films. And if you can get read of subtitles as well, even better. I know that not everybody is in that, um, is in that stage already, but anyway, if you can do that, if you can like push yourself to that, it is great. And read, you know, you find a great variety of ring of readings for people from uh, like for people of the any level you can imagine from the very beginning to high advanced that you have reading available on the internet so just make use of it it's free it's there it won't take much time of your day and something i learned in ccaa and something i really believe in translation is horrible translation kills the learning process because as you translate you're training your brain to build an equivalent in your own language in your mother tongue for what you are learning but the thing is that not only languages vary in structure that means the structure that one languages follow is not always the same to to the other language you're learning but also, you don't always have an equivalent. You not only you don't always have a word that will correspond to exact to the exact word that that you're looking for, that you're reading, or that you're learning. So the best thing is to focus on meaning. What does this mean? And also, when when you learn by listening, don't hold on just to the way the words are pronounced but try to hold on to the way the sentence is pronounced and structured because that will give you a great idea of how language intonation works and that is really important. So I think that's it. I Today I had a presentation at the university at, uh, and I was really happy like with the feedback I got from 
from the teacher and also from my colleagues that is also something important you're not only like gonna have to write you're probably gonna have to present stuff as well so be ready for that and yeah I was I was really happy I was really satisfied to hear positive feedback and to like really like take a minute to think of my improvement um, related to to my language skill as I've been here. So I hope I have answered some of your questions. I hope this video helps. If it doesn't, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, if it doesn't, I can always try to make another one. So if you still have more questions, uh, just send me your doubts via Ask.fm and I'll make, um, I'll do my best to to try to, to answer them in another opportunity. So thank you again. Thank you for like following the blog and the videos and for sending me your questions and your feedbacks. It's it's always nice to hear not only like your doubts and kind of help you, but also what you guys are thinking of, of like my whole na terra de bet thing. <laughs> so thank you. I hope you have a great weekend and yeah, I see you sometime here in the land of bed. <laughs>